most people at home, you have so many small stressors in a day. And out here, the challenges are big, but they're also singular. And it's just so simple and beautiful. So we've had too much oil in the cylinders, so we had to get the oil out of there to be able to actually pull it. What did I tell you? He is a Colorado boy in the mountains of the Yukon by himself right now. Let's fly. Okay. What you're doing in the Yukon, it's like hunting the whole western United States. These journeys, it's like me going from Colorado through Wyoming, through Montana, and then hunting in Idaho. Got everyone else fixing the boat. Someone's got to still be hunting. <laughs> Looking for a caribou for Greg and a moose for Jerry. Give it a little more. Give it. Uh, there it is. Oh, there's a backfire. Hey buddy, so once I pull the fuel line, do I do that same process again? Pull the plugs, clean them, put fuel in it again, in the cylinder. Okay, well we've done that three or four times now. Kill switches. Good, throttle. Okay, throttle's full, pump the ball. I started, I started spitting water out. Well that's the pump, that's the water yeah. pump. But I mean, that, I hadn't seen that yet. All right. Well, yeah, I really appreciate you putting up with us, Jerry. Try to do it midday so that I'm not disturbing your hunt in any way. At least we got one motor working around here. I was gonna say, just think about it. This is the way things are supposed to work. Yeah. So this is one of those things that makes the hunting community kind of special in that you know, we could be out here in literally the middle of nowhere, come across, you know, guys like Paul and Jerry, who, you know, if you need a hand, they're to help you out. We weren't able to get our boat running, and, you know, Paul has been gracious enough to run us to the end of the lake where we're going to start the long hike back to our camp. And we really hope that Jerry is able to connect on a moose. Um, you know, he's 77 years old, and if he can do that, that's that's a lot of reward just for our team to know at the end of it that uh, he was successful. So hopefully that's what happens, and we've got a few more days of hunting ahead of us, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, I can remember going over that, and I remember uh, I thought I remember a ridge going that way. Yeah, good, good to meet you. Sure, appreciate if you're in the neighborhood, stop in for coffee. Yeah. I'll be in the neighborhood in a few days. <laughs> days like today, I was saying to Trav, are far more frustrating for me as because you know I just want to hunt and you lose a day in the backcountry to engines and and it's just it's it's way more mentally hard because I'm not hunting so what I want to do is I want a glass back in there because that could be where we're going tomorrow he's the biggest caribou we've seen so far but he's not a shooter. I think if we kind of <laughs> just get around that willow or that alder, eh? Yeah, I can see home. Yeah, let's get back to camp and get some food into us and just 
wrap up the day and try to figure out a plan for tomorrow. Man, that's cool. I thought we just turned our hunt from a caribou hunt into a bear hunt. Just thinking about the speed at which bears can actually move when they want to, but bears get overheated real quick. The plan's to hike up into this mountain that we've been watching caribou from for the last few days. And uh, the line that we were going to take is directly in line with now what we see is a, a sow and a cub. It's taken us a few days to, well, like five days to really narrow down where we believe the caribou are. And this mountain has been the hot spot. So now we've moved camp up here and there's def definitive caribou trails up here. So that's great. This mountainside is just full of berries. So I expect that that is not the last bear we're gonna see. So we're gonna go up another 200 feet in elevation and probably drop camp on the ridge and then start hunting, you know, lighter packs from there. We're in the right country. That's for me, you know, after all the hard, the hard push up the mountain, this is the exciting part where you drop your pack and you peek over the other side to look at mountains that you've never seen before and see what's over there. It's been another long day. <laughs> Uh, we're just cooking dinner now. We just got back to the tents. So we've had, what do we saw? Like we saw over 20 caribou. Yeah, we saw the sow grizzly with the cub. We saw a big black bear. We saw a big bull moose making his way towards Jerry. But yeah, we've spent, you know, the better part of the day just up on the top of this mountain. This seems to be just where all the caribou are. It's going to be a cold night tonight for sure. It's been cold evening already. All four of us are wearing every item of clothing we have and it's starting to rain right now. <laughs> All right. Just another night in the mountain. <laughs> yeah, here we go. We found some caribou hair up here in the top of the mountain and it's actually hollow and it's the warmest hair on any game animal here in the north. That's why these animals can be the endurance athletes that they are. So lean, you know, moving all the time, but yet they can still stay warm. They are, in my opinion, one of the most underrated game animals because, you know, a lot of people think that hunting them is easy and maybe it, it is easy in those great big herds, but up here in the mountains, when they're not these big groups, they're not the easiest animals to hunt. I enjoy hunting them. They're just difficult to hunt in this mountain environment sometimes. In my opinion, they're the most adaptable animal in the north. This mountain almost seems a little bit different than all the others around. I really like this country. The higher we get, the more I can see of this particular mountain block. It just seems like it's a, the vegetation is a little bit different than all of the other mountains around. Like we're, I see 13 caribou right over there. This is sitting on the other side of this hill in full broad view of these caribou. They're 50 yards away from me. He was down there watching them and got pinned down. So if that doesn't say something for this camel, I don't know what does because these caribou have been feeding within yeah, 30 yards of him for the last 20 minutes. He's trying to get his scent on.
while we were watching those caribou. I thought Dry was kind of pinned down by them, but he just wasn't feeling good. It seemed like he just went downhill so fast and then came around and started getting sick. So I don't really know what the, the situation is right now. I'll we'll have to let him get back, kind of see what he thinks, but we're certainly not going to stay up here and make him suffer for the next two days that he started vomiting. Now he's back up on his feet, which is great. So he's just trying to walk around and generate some heat, but it's not a good place to be sick. The longer you wait, you know, if he gets worse, you may not get him off this mountain. We'll have to see how he feels and we'll go from there. That's not good. <laughs> 